Hey there, Internet. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, invention is a curious thing, as we saw in our last episode with Weird Science. Curiouser still, when it comes into contact with that British obsession, the weather. Even more so when we add food into the mix. All of which brings me to today's topic, cloudy with a chance of meatball. Released in 2009, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is the tale of an inventor whose invention brings him love, fame, and much more besides. This movie was an early release from Sony Pictures Animation, whose output has varied, but have put out some good solid movies, including this one. So grab your coat, and your knife and fork, because it's looking decidedly cloudy, with a chance of meatballs. Meet Flint Lockwood, inventor, visionary, architect of the future. But inventors are resilient souls, and Flint is about to change the world. Surges. I remember one time they blew out my entire rig. Or maybe that was a solar flare. I don't really remember. We're also introduced to Tim Lockwood, Flint's father, with whom our protagonist lives. You don't keep throwing your net where there aren't any. Now, Tim runs a bait shop and peppers his speech with fishing metaphors. Needless to say, he is baffled by his inventor son. Meanwhile, in New York, we meet weather girl Sam Sparks, who came to Swallow Falls to report some rinky-dink tourist trap that the smarmy mayor has cooked up in a desire for publicity. But Flint crashes the party with his latest invention, the diatonic, super-mutating dynamic, food replicator. Sadly, the machine gets away from him, and all hope with it. Our two lost souls meet in despair. But there's an old saying that seems rather appropriate. It really works! Ah, success at last. But did any of his inventions truly fail? And so Sam is invited to Flint's laboratory, where he uses the ancient art of misdirection to buy himself time to construct the diatonic food replicator base station. It only takes 10 minutes to construct a base station from prefab, I should know. And with this, life becomes altogether more flavoursome in the rebranded island town of Chew and Swallow. Hold a grand reopening of the island as a must-see cruise destination. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much damned from the start. But the stress is already beginning to show. And not just on the machine. It's it's too complicated for an old fisherman. Meanwhile, our protagonists share a sweet moment inside a jelly palace. And Samantha Sparks bears her soul. And I still need these glasses, but I never wear them. Because we cannot ever, ever have ugly people on our screens, right? Wrong. Look at what the media's done to Carol Vorderman. It's a disgrace is what it is. It's an absolute disgrace. But at dinner, the stress is showing, and not just between father and son. Doesn't this steak look a little big to you? But the malevolent and increasingly corpulent mayor is only interested in the bottom line. Thus comes the day of Chew and Swallow's grand reopening, which inevitably goes south in more ways than one. Everybody loves you. But at what price? 
But a spaghetti tornado is inbound. I can turn it off. And worse, the Megaton Mare is in control. The Mare's folly has wide-reaching consequences. But in Flint's despair, Tim Lockwood has some wise words for his son. When it rains, you put on a coat. Tim Lockwood, ladies and gentlemen, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that we should still place our faith in metaphor. And so our heroes reconcile and head for the DFR, hoping to shut it down. <laughs> a machine that size would keep Galactus from eating worlds for a good long while. But no plan survives first contact. And after sentient pizza and an unplanned diversion, we end up inside the DFR meatball. And so, Flint finally reaches the replicator core. But the kill code wasn't. Luckily, our hero is infinitely adaptable. Thus, Chew and Swallow is saved. But shock! Flint's alive! And there's a better use for Steve's speech tool. I love my son. Thus do we leave the island town of Swallow Falls. So that was Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. And you know something? I'm gonna put this into the House of Love. This is undoubtedly a family film, and that's no backhanded compliment. Mostly this film resonates with me on a personal level. We've all tried to get along with our parents, our misunderstanding fathers, our well-meaning mothers, and sure, it's a candy-coloured, over-stylized, heavily cartoony CG metaphor, but a metaphor it remains, and a direct one at that. On the technical side, the clouds are magnificent, the acting, in both voice and face, is pitched perfectly. Overall, this is a fun, feel-good movie, and while the narrative arc feels a mite generic, it certainly won't spoil your appetite. Go on, take a bite. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. So long, folks!